Hi, everyone. Welcome to a presentation by David Shea. He'll be talking about student views of dialogic teaching. David, please take it away. Go ahead. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm going to start the share screen function to see if it works. Can you see the PowerPoint? Yeah, it looks great. Okay, uh, I'm gonna rush through this as fast as possible so that we can have time at the end to um, uh, to ask questions possibly. Also, yes, yeah, so also a bug question. If you want to put one in the chat, that would be also useful. Okay. Right. Um, dialogic teaching, what is it? It is not present, teacher presented information. Like Freire says, depositing facts into student brains, like depositing funds into a bank account. It is not autonomous work where students are on their own in small group work or pairs. Basically, uh, dialogic te teaching is talking to think in whole class teacher fronted discussion. It is students, their uh, role in dialogic teaching, oops, wait a minute, I've messed up, is to engage with ideas, explain their thinking, express their opinions, make an argument through practice, shared activity, and legitimate participation to actually construct ideas and to engage in discourse. The things that are missing, precisely that are missing in high school education when they're preparing for interest exams. As the teacher, the role is to scaffold talk, to orchestrate the dis discussion, and to construct the social. A colleague asked me the other day, what skills were developed through dialogic teaching? At first, I didn't have any answer because I was ready to say, it's not about skills, but there are skills that are developed, confidence, fluency, students overcome reticence and develop their speaking and listening abilities to speak on the spot and to engage in uh, oral co communication. There's a development of usable vocabulary, both productive and receptive, Motivation and engagement increases and increased awareness of language are all what you can call skills, I believe. A brief literature review. Exploratory talk is rooted in Alexander and Barnes' uh, discussion of talk that is reasoning together to develop understanding. This is primarily in uh, elementary school, primary education, and it's been developed uh, both in the UK and in the US. Alexander Barnes and Mercer are all in the UK and they are interested in particularly math and science education. Accountable talk means the teacher presses students to develop their explanation and present evidence and reasoning in support of their academic argument. So students often don't get a chance to explain themselves and to, uh, to have to present evidence for what they're talking about. It's interactional talk that promotes thinking. Uh, the teacher asks for justification, challenging or prompting for evidence. It's engaging talk that is joint discourse that weaves others' contribution to develop ideas in a cumulative fashion. And it's also developing a discursive space, sharing ideas with different perspectives that creates a space for reflection. Positioning, the teacher weaves comments in a way that positions students as active contributors of knowledge. In an EFL context, dialogic teaching is far less developed. In Singapore, there have been a couple of articles that have recently come out talking about engendering a community, fostering respect and tolerance, and teachers trying to construct knowledge and understanding together. There have not been that many explicitly noted dialogic teaching uh, uh, articles from Japan or China that I've seen in the past few years. I've developed, a, I've been working on a dialogic classroom project over the past couple of years. It's an ongoing study. It's reflected with an a, a, a action research orientation, looking for local solution and pragmatic, dis, dis, pragmatically decided uh, procedures. These are things that work for the teacher that sometimes don't necessarily live up to external uh, uh, ex 
assumptions about how research is done. I've been teaching a first year university advanced film class with 20 to 22 students in both sections of the class, content-based instruction oriented, not EMI, because these are students in the first year who are basically EFL, uh, uh, L2 students, developing an integrated skills curriculum. It's required graduation credit and the TOEIC scores run between 850 and over 900. The accountable talk moves are the moves that I try to make consciously to introduce these in the classroom, in the discussion. Today, I'm not going to try to talk about this. I've, try, I've talked about this in other articles that will be in the reference list, where I, I do things like revoice what the student has said, adding on to what they said, repeating, reasoning, waiting, and taking turns, encouraging turns of talk that are balanced and uh, uh, democratic and try to encourage everyone to participate. Features of the class. I start off with a quick stand-up quiz. I've written about stand-up in, 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 in a Hong Kong journal that's in the references as well, where students are compelled to talk. They must present their own opinion in class. Uh, discussion questions orient the, their, their thinking. They have a preliminary uh, small group work time and then they stand up to do whole class discussion where they present their answers to the questions, their written essays, and my role as the teacher is to engage and scaffold their answers. Small group work is preliminary. It's also designed to create social ties, but there are, strong, there are important limitations about peer feedback that uh, uh, Neil Mercer and, uh, and, and, uh, and his colleagues have written about. I, talked about it briefly in a couple at a job presentation a couple of years ago. The research question for today's present today's paper is how is dialogic teaching enacted and how do students respond? Um, methodology I had I carried out over a period of a year anonymous open-ended surveys, term term final liquid questionnaires, selected oral recordings that I analyzed qualitatively, permission to collect data, I had permission to edit the data. The students wanted me to make sure that there were no grammatical mistakes in there, uh, as long as I didn't change the content of their the contribution. And I analyzed this according to um, a qualitative research, looking for patterns and salience. Findings of the, uh, of, of the analysis. Their students are, demonstrate shifting conception of the L2. The role of the teacher is central, but it's somewhat contested. And the students are, are, are demonstrating a, a new identification with English language learning. There's a recorded clip that I have of an interaction that shows what I'm talking about. This is we're discussing the, um, the, the final scene of the film, The Descendants, when the students are talking about what the film, uh, what the themes of the film are, what the film is saying to them. And this is what we were talking about. Good point. Anybody want to add anything else? Is that everything? The count. What's the count symbol at? Um, all right. So could we, do you think it would be possible to say that Elizabeth Death was sacrifice, her sacrifice brought the family together? That was what brought the family and made them whole, which is kind of a sad conclusion. Thanks. Um, you're talking about the concept. I like each person's idea, so this is discussion. I think it was the boat for New Jersey. The couch was a boat for a new journey. Whoa. <laughs> Hold on. Really nice idea. Can you explain it a little bit? Sorry. Alan? Couch, um, I thought couch was like home. Like, right. Like home is like place to yes. gather Cou with. The couch is a symbol of, of the home. Yes. Home and you know, like people gather with mm -hmm. and like having like 
know, shelling their time and rocks. So, so this unity of the family is <laughs> the unity of the family is they're together again. They started off broken and it pulled them together. Yeah. Anything? Kaho? I thought that the touch scene, they were carrying the same blanket. Right. And, like, and same food and same spoon. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, I'm not sure about they were using the blanket that Elizabeth was using at the house. Oh, now if that's true, that's a really, that's... So I thought like that blanket represents her mother, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. The family was becoming one. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's the blanket. Mm -hmm. Is it possible? <laughs> Are you serious? So students end up applauding each other. What you can see in this excerpt, I would argue, is that you see solicitation from the teacher where I'm trying to pull out the student ideas to encourage what they're saying, to confirm what they're saying, and to expand what they're saying. The students are comfortable. This is at the end of the year. It's after two semesters. They're comfortable to speak to their classmates. They're taking the initiative and they're expressing their ideas. Importantly, there's a shared focus. There's a jointly constructed perspective on this film that all the students share. They're presenting different perspectives though as they do this, and the students are engaged with others' ideas, what is called interanimation in the discourse. And what I see here is that students, more than the individual assistance in the zone of proximal development, the scaffolding that the teacher provides, there's something closer to Bakhtinian address here. The students are addressing each other. There's the kind of orientation with the sense of audience where the ideas have weight and consequence. When they're talking to each other, they're actually listening to each other. And this is what I was aiming for in the class with that spontaneous applause. What do students think about this? kind of uh, approach to uh, discussion. There's a strong preference for constructive engagement with the ideas, the students say. These are from about 400 uh, 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 short open-ended surveys, and I have analyzed them and uh, uh, categorized them. And these are the three categories that I've uh, generated grounded in the, in the discussion. It's the first time in my life to discuss in English. I had no discussion in high school. Every class was lecture style. I never thought that having discussion in class and explaining my own ideas would develop my writing and speaking ability. This to me is really important where their students are noting that explaining has product, has under has receptive um, effect. The class improved my overall speaking skills, but way more than that, it made me able to come up with meaningful ideas. It made me think about ideas. In speaking in high school, we did a lot of debate, debate so it was almost always thinking about disagreement. But in this class, I got to agree with others, but from a different perspective. In sum, the students were positive about the opportunities to speak, the emphasis on ideas and content, and the chance to hear other classmates, almost everyone. There were some students, actually two students in each class who did not, they reported that they did not enjoy the class and they did not feel that it was that necessarily that helpful to their English. About teacher assistance, for the most part, students recognized that my efforts to scaffold their talk were positive because the teacher helps me, I don't have to give up explaining complicated things, one student said. The teacher's comment after we speak makes me understand what I, better what I said myself. I have difficulty saying what I want to say, but when the teacher gives me key words or something that supports me to speak, I feel glad about it. The teacher helps me to think more, but there were, however, some reservations. Most of the time, comments you give us gather my thoughts, but it would help if you could just let us finish what we are saying, one student noted. And sometimes the professor speaks too much and I have to stop, one student said. I generally like the way you teach, but sometimes I don't like you because you make people laugh at me. At the same time, I enjoy it, so please, please keep going. 
keep going, please. This is a, a interesting, ambiguous, conflicted response, where she contradicts herself or he contradicts himself. Your handwriting should be more readable. What can I say? Teaching is a messy business without researcher certainty. I think this is an important point that I would like to talk about later. There's shifting identity vis-a-vis -vis the L2. English comes easily out of my mouth now, students said. I'm not scared of speaking English anymore. My brain is changing from Japanese to English. I feel closer to English now. This class changed my English identity. Before I thought English was just baggage, but now English has become my mother language. I was really surprised to get this comment. I didn't expect it. I didn't give them any, uh, any hints or, or suggestions that it could be uh, a mother change into a mother language. Explaining to other people makes your idea clear, one student wrote, and the social environment affects how I learn English and how I behave during class. Before this class, English was just a language to connect with foreigners, but I learned that English isn't just a tool, it's something different, it has more meaning. In sum, dialogic teaching gave the students productive practice in extended talk, precisely the kind of practice they do not receive in high school, resulting in increased fluency and confidence, ability to express ideas, present interpretations, and develop arguments. At the same time, dialogic teaching also deepened their identification with English as a transformative tool of thinking, shifting student orientation to the uh, foreign language. Interanimation was a key uh, construct that came out of the analysis. The orientation that develops toward classmates. Dialogic teaching is not as often presented in their literature simply about how to solicit ideas and expand student talk. However important those are, it's also about orchestrating an engagement with classmates and constructing a social environment where students feel a sense of interanimation where there's shared ideas and shared investment, where there's shared investment in the interaction, where they can clap for each other when they make a comment that is impressive. And to create this social atmosphere of shared investment, it's arguably the goal of dialogic teaching, a challenge that is more difficult than simply responding to individual speakers. But it's particularly important in foreign language contexts where cultural attitudes work against individuals expressing their opinions in front of their peers and contributing different perspectives to the group, as is often said about Japanese reticence. Sometimes people assert that Japanese don't need, need English in Japan because everybody uses Japanese already. In fact, I think this is a reductive view of, of, of English. Learning, learners using English with each other and with themselves doing what they don't normally do in the L1 while reflecting a new orientation to the L2, not as an external measure of proficiency, but as a tool of social engagement, as a way to think about ideas and to means to reflect, act, and to wonder. The paper on which this presentation is based has come out in the Hiyoshi Review of, of English Studies and it's available online for download if you'd like to take a look at it. I have made some changes since the paper came out in September. And there's a first section in the paper that's about the uh, KO, emphasis, emphasis on a KO student perspective. But after that, the paper is essentially what I presented today. These are the references which are part of the um, selected view of references, they're also in the paper. If you have any questions or comments, I would be glad to talk about them today. I've got five minutes left if I calculated this correctly. And we can go to uh, hangout room, Zoom number, hangout room number one. That's correct. And yeah. there's my email. Thank right. you very much. Thank you very much, David. Hi, everyone. Could you unmute and give a round of applause? Thank you very much. It's got a was very, very, very interesting. So yeah, we've got five minutes, everyone. Any questions? Please feel free to unmute your mic and ask a question. Should I stop the skit share? Yeah, why not? Yeah, stop why not? Share. Okay. All right. Anyone? Okay, well, I'll have a question. So 
David, I, I'm very interested in this in this topic because I'm, I'm interested in helping students really learn. And you really pointed out a very powerful way of like, not just conversation, not just talking and debating, but like really like getting deep into a topic and making them think and grow. And the, the, the clip was very, very excellent, very persuasive. And uh, I was wondering, you did this with a really advanced level class. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's any hope at all to do it with maybe a less accomplished level of student? I mean, is I it... think so. I think how would you I, I believe that? so. But um, my my experience, I was teaching primarily advanced students at, during my tenure at Kale. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what I focused on. And that's how I developed this notion of dialogic teaching. Mm -hmm. But I believe and looking at the literature, there, there's a lot written about people about primary school education mm -hmm. with L1 speakers. There's not a lot written about L, L, L2 speakers and mm -hmm. uh, lower level L2 speakers. Mm -hmm. But I think what some of the students are pointing out is that the production is helping them to understand mm. that being pushed to speak yeah. helps them to think and to explain their ideas mm. helps them to not only understand what the other students are doing but to orient toward english and to and to the and to the world it's like so like articulating what they want to say it helps them yeah. discover what they want to say it's like a simultaneous process so i think you can do that even with lower level students hmm. um if they are if, if and i think you can also stimulate their motivation through this, this uh, technique, through this, mm -hmm. through dialogic teaching, mm -hmm. uh, that will benefit students who are not in the advanced classes. Mm -hmm. So my answer would be, I've not done it, but I think it can be done. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, that's hopeful. So, Go ahead, well, Annette. You, you note you noted that this was towards the end of a semester or the second yes, semester yes, or something. Yes, so. Yes, yes right at the beginning in april may when they're new students do you try this and how does it oh, go of course. When, they're, when they're new <laughs> yes um yeah. i i it i started from the beginning yeah. i and i emphasize orienting the students i tell them what we're about and i tell them why we're doing it and with the ko students i always framed it in terms of fukuzawa sensei's um Enzetsu, he, he started mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, the speech hall. He built the speech hall and told students that they should speak out their ideas. Mm -hmm. But I think um, all Japanese students need to, um, well, they're not just, they need to develop their spoken ability. They want to develop their spoken ability mm -hmm. and they want to, to, to have a, a way to do this. And mm -hmm. so what, what I do at the beginning with Japanese students is I ask them to all stand up and they can sit down when they say something. And that's, some people say draconian, but it's also, my students have said, almost 100% of the students have said, being pushed to speak is what they want. Hmm. They do feel at the beginning a resistance and some stu one student said, that she felt sick every day, every Wednesday, when because I had she had my class in the afternoon. Uh -huh. But mm -hmm. by the end of the semester, she was one of the most enthusiastic students in the class. Interesting. Yeah. So I think that I, I I see that that's one of the things that I really like about the, this this approach, that you can see students actually changing, and they are aware of this change because it stimulates their language awareness. So I think it's a, it's a great way to start off with. If you don't start off this way and you say, we'll get to the important stuff later, I think you'll lose them at the beginning. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, excellent. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we're basically out of time. So I'd like to just to say thank you again. It was a very wonderful presentation. It's gonna be online posted. Um, I'd like to stop the recording now. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks thank everyone for coming. Thank you very much. And, uh, please head on over to the Hangouts room uh, if you'd like to continue the conversation about okay. all this. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you, take care.